Hello crafty friends. So today I'm going to show you how to make some of these little mason jar shakers. So let me see. I'm hoping that's showing up well on there. There's one that I made. Here's another one that I made. A little bit different. And here's a little bitty one I made. This one I actually made where this would actually fit inside a pocket letter. So you can put this one in a pocket letter. So you can make these at all different sizes. This process is the same for all of them. These don't require any kind of dies or fuse tools or anything else. You don't need a whole lot. You need a paper cutter to be able to cut your paper. You need some glue. I use Eileen's tacky glue. You will need an envelope punch. Although you probably could work out doing this without an envelope punch, I would really suggest an envelope punch. You will need some kind of acetate. Now here's what I use. These are old, I've had these, oh my gosh. This is from when I was in college doing my master's and I graduated with my master's in 98. So this is like 20 years old, but I came across them the other day. And so these are those sheets that you use on the projector, overhead projectors. Now something else you could use if you need, could, like this here is a plastic laminate stuff off of um, a box. So you could cut your piece out of the middle of this if you wanted to, if you didn't have these kind of sheets. The other thing, and then you'll need the paper that you're going to use. And this is an excellent project for scraps because you don't need big pieces of paper. So the one that I'm going to demonstrate for you, I am going to use, this is actually a double-sided card stock. And then this is a single collar, but I debated, and I actually think I'm going to do it with the pink and the orange, just because I really like that. Anyway, um, my pieces for this, if I remember right, yeah, it's five and a half by four. So it's, this piece is five and a half, and this is four. But like, for instance, this little bitty one here was made by a two and a half by three and a half. This one was made by a four by three. And this one was made, I think, five, yeah, five by, so this was made by a five by three and a half. So this one's saying you can use just about any kind of size you want. So, but you will need that. You're gonna need some kind of piece of paper to make this topper here. Now what I am using is this sheet. I don't know if that's showing up good or not. It's a corrugated paper that I picked up at Tuesday mornings in their clearance rack. You also could do this with the um, things that I cannot remember what they're called. You put your paper through them and you crank them. Anyway, you can get ones that do this to your paper. Or you could use any kind, it wouldn't have to be textured, it could be any kind of a contrasting thing to make your jar lid with. This does, is not very big for that. You just need a little strip that is up, like a half inch wide, and then, or a half inch long, whatever, and then it will need to be however long the, the end of your jar ends up being. So I'll show you that. And you need a piece of laminate now with your laminate, you can do it one or two ways. You can cut your laminate so it's the exact same size as your cardstock. And you can punch it and everything just like we're going to do. And actually that's probably what I'm gonna to do with this. So I will go ahead and make this four inches. And excuse me, because it is gonna squeak when I do that. So it will probably pick up. I don't know whether that little high pitch squeal picked up. Um, so after you trim your paper, you won't need your paper trimmer anymore.
then you will also need stuff to put into your shaker. So like I have some little gold beads. I have some little clear micro beads. I have some little silver hearts. I have another pack of beads, which I lost because I'm good at that kind of stuff. Then I have some little heart confetti that I'm going to use. I also have some gold confetti that I'm going to use. Um, so anything that you would want to put into a shaker. You also could use some larger things like oh, jewels and stuff like that. You'll need something to wrap the top of your jar with. Like this one I did with just a little piece of like yarn. Um, this I did with a piece of um, paper string. And then tags. I got some of these little bitty tags at Hobby Lobby during clearance. But you could cut your own little tag or whatever. And then you might want a little embellishment or something to put on your tag if you're going to use a tag. Or like this one I didn't use a tag, but then I did put a little heart down here. Um, this one I used um, some blue jute, a little tag, and I put a little, some, couple little flowers on it. Um, this is the one that we're making. I am going to use a little tag. I am going to use some of this gold thread that I have here to wrap around it. And I am going to use a little heart embellishment on my tag when I do that. But now let's go ahead. The other thing you probably should have is a pair of um, detail scissors with the little precision tips because that will help when we go to cut things. And my nosy cat is joining us. That's Jenny. Her brother Jake Draco is laying over there. I don't know if you can see him in the camera. They're always assisting me with my crafting. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. And I'm sorry, you will need your paper cutter again. That's my bad. Oopsie. But I'll show you when you need that. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you take your paper on your envelope punch board and you line the top of your paper up. So the top of the paper is right here with this little blue thing and up, you know, against here. Punch it. Then you want to flip your paper over, same thing, line it up so that it's nice and even, punch. Then since we're going to, and then for your back piece, do the same thing, line it up, punch, flip, get off my stuff, kitty cat, line it up, punch. Then you're going to use your Reverse punch in the back on your paper, on your punch board. Push your corner all the way in, punch. Push your corner all the way in, punch. Push your corner all the way in, punch. And I would use cardstock weight paper to do this. I would not just do this with scrapbooking paper. And I forgot, take your cellophane sheet, same thing, line it up, punch, it's a little bit harder, and it doesn't really punch super well, um, so you're probably going to end up having to clean it up a little bit, but that's alright. Flip it. Yeah, okay, so punching it on here may not be the best thing. Um, it may just be easier to trim it with your scissors, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and trim it with my scissors. Okay, so after you've punched these, that's what you need on your punch board. So you're going to take your pieces and you're going to cut off these little pieces right here. So you're just going to kind of line your scissors up and snip. Line your scissors up and snip. And then and if you don't get it really good, just go back and trim it up. Same thing over here with your, your back piece. 
laugh and snip. Laugh and snip. Okay, and that basically makes your jar shape. There's always the transparency to the side for the moment. I'm going to take the piece that is going to be my front. Now here's where I use my cutter. You could do this with a ruler and mark it and an exacto knife if you wanted to. I do this with mine. So this is a fairly large jar. You definitely want to make sure you clear the shoulders. I don't know if you can see that. You want to make sure you clear the shoulders. So I'm going to bring this up so it's probably a good half inch. And then I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to line it up so it's about half an inch in. Then I'm going to bring it and I'm going to cut this way until I am about half inch from that side. Then I'm going to flip the jar bring it up here and do the back and I'm probably going to leave about hmm, an inch and a quarter-ish bottom piece and same thing I'm going to bring this so that it's about at the half inch mark in here and then I'm going to come this way until I'm about a half an inch from the side Okay, so then you have a cut here. Oh, let me see. You have a cut here and a cut here. Now then what I'm going to do, because that's supposed to be, I was doing it at a half inch, so I'm going to line this at a half an inch from the sides and position that where that cut is. And then I'm going to bring it down here, watching this. To get to my cut. So, you see that corner came out, this corner didn't. This corner I got all the way over, this corner I didn't. So this is actually where you'll want, why you need detail scissors. Because it's just a little fraction, and rather than trying to come back and do it with this, I'm just going to go snip. And if you were trying to do this with big scissors, you would probably end up chopping your paper. Okay. Then the same thing. I'm going to line this up at about half an inch in. Take my paper. I'm going to line that up at half an inch and then I'll bring this to where it looks like my cut starts. Bring it down and go until it should be right at the other cut. And here again, I didn't make it all the way to the exact spot. So doing, doing with my little precision tip scissors. And you have that little square that you remove. Now we're done with the cutting board. Okay. So you need your piece of stuff. So what I'm going to do, since it didn't work well trying to punch it, so I must not have punched it before. I thought I had, but I must not have. I'm just going to line it up with this. And then I'm just going to come in here trim it up even come down here on the bottom curve it come here curve. it also doesn't matter if this is a little bit smaller than your other piece now what I'm going to do I have two choices, so I'm going to kind of take it and look now that I have the hole cut out. So that's with my orange side up. And that's with this side up. And while I think that they're both pretty, I think I'm going to 
willing to go with the pink and orange because I just think it's pretty. Okay. So since I want the orange side facing out, I'm going to lay it down like this. Right in front of me. Yes, okay. I'm going to take my tacky glue. Now you don't need a lot. You just kind of want to do this. Come on, Jenny, move. You're kind of sort of, you know, in the way. Jenny, go. 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 My cat doesn't really care, by the way, whether you're watching her clean her butt or not. So you just kind of tightly glue that around, then you're going to take your piece of laminate. And lay it down, pick it up, move it around if you need to, slide it around a little bit to kind of line up the edges. Once you've got that pretty much done, just put it down and smooth your hand over the glue. If you have a brayer, you can bray it. That's, you don't want a lot of glue because you don't want the glue mushing out. You just want it to be able to stick this down, and it really sticks it down pretty fast. Um, you can double check like I am right now, and I can see that I didn't line it up perfectly, so that I see a little edge here. So I'm going to come in here with my scissors, and now I'm just going to trim that off. And same thing with this little piece right here. So I'm just going to trim it off. Okay, that looks good. And you know what I might not have mentioned that you need? Mounting tape. Uh, this is, I'm just using the regular Scotch mounting tape that comes on a roll. So, your pieces have to be as long as or a little bit longer than the window. So for me, I can cut these, so I just cut it the length I need, and then I can split this, and it's relatively easy because it's got these cute little squares, so you can just kind of line it up, and you can really get a pretty good straight line. So I'm gonna use this piece here, these pieces, to be the, ed the edges. I'm gonna get a little bit smaller piece for the top and the bottom. Just lay it there for the moment. Now for the top and the bottom, I just kind of lay it down here. And I want this one to be more closer to just what the width of the window is. So, cut it. And flip it over so I can see where I'm cutting at. And then if I have a piece left over like this, I just stick it back on my roll like that to use for later. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'll line it up just a little bit above the window because you definitely do not want it to come down into the window. Because you don't want to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. You can move it around a little bit if you need to. You want to try to line it up with the edges. Okay. Now, I'll take the longer strips and I'm going to come in here. Hmm. Okay, so I think this one I didn't get exactly even. I need to pick it up and move it over a little bit. That's what you want to do is you want to butt this up and you want to butt this one up so that they are touching and there is not a gap. And you can just double check and make sure it's not showing outside your window. Okay. And then you're going to come over on this side and you're going to do the same thing. Butt it up against there and bring it over here, put it up against there, press it down. 
I feel my hair. And if you end up with something like, I don't know if you can see that, where I have like that little piece right there, I'm just going to come in here with my scissors, snip it so you can't see it. Okay. Now, this does not give you a very deep shaker area. If you wanted to, you can do double, which would mean cutting two pieces. When I'm doing that, I cut them and I put them together before I stick them down. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it shallow and put stuff in. So the first thing I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in some of these little heart sequence things that I have. And while it's not a real deep window, it's a fairly big window, so I want to make sure I have enough stuff scat to scatter around. Okay. I'm going to put in some of these little gold beads. I have some little clear micro beads. I'm going to put some of those in. I'm usually fairly generous with these because they're really small. So, but they make a nice shaker. Okay. And then I'm going to add some of this gold glitter. Jenny, what are you doing? I also distracting you. So I'm going to take some of this gold glitter and just kind of sprinkle it here on the top of this stuff. Now I'm going to tell you what you do not want to do. You don't want to put your glitter in as your first item because if you do, it's going to cling to your sheet and it's not going to really shake well. But if you put it in as your last item, it works pretty well. Then you need something like a picker tool or something to get your tape backs off. Now you want to do this and you want to be careful as you're doing it because what you don't want to do is you do not want to jostle your card. You do not want to get any of this stuff up onto your exposed tape. Like I did one time when I hit the damn card and sent everything flying. But anyway, that's what you don't want to do. So we hopefully will be demonstrating not to say that. I just did that. So if you do get like worn or something, try to get it off because you need this to seal. So you just want to go slow. Don't, you know, jerk the back. You just pull it off slowly. Okay. Then once you're done, you're going to take your back and you're just going to kind of line up your tops and line up your bottom and just kind of lay it down. You can still shift it a little bit to kind of try to make sure everything's nice and lined up. Okay, when you have it all lined up, take it, press it down. Because you want this to make good contact with that tape. So after you do this, take your card, flip it over, and then I just hold my hand on it and I do this onto my board piece. Just to make sure. And then, you can double check and make sure nothing's falling out anywhere. And as long as you matched your tapes up good, it shouldn't. Ah, now here you see a mistake. I don't know if you that's showing up or not. But you can see the pink right here. I didn't get it lined up well. Don't fret. Take your detail scissors and just trim. Okay, then you're going to take your little half inch strip, you're going to put it on your jar lid to measure it for the width that you need. And you come in and clip it. Okay, 
kitchen for you. Add your glue to it. Bring it over, lay it down, line it up, have a little play time with the tacky glue, get it all around there nice and neat. You know, as you can see, the shape's nice, and it's very pretty, and because you put the glitter in last, it tends to stay toward the back. Like I said, if you put it in first, it would just absolutely cover your window. It will come up some, to some degree on your window, but... What you do is you don't touch your window with your gluey finger like I just did, but that's okay. Tacky glue will rub off. Okay. So, now, whatever you're going to wrap around it, whether it's ribbon, twine, whatever, I'm going to go ahead and start. And so what I do, stick it here, coming off, come around, now this is a thinner one. I normally do two, but I'm going to do three because this is a thinner twine. Come here after you wrapped it around and just whoops, tie it off. I tie it in a knot. Okay. Then, since I'm going to put this little tag on it, take my little tag. Put my tag on. Tie my tag. That's Draco, my other little helper companion. He sees this thread and he wants it. He is a crafting thief. Okay, snip. Hide my thread from the cat. Then, like I said, okay, move it away down. Oh, here they are. Yeah. And I want to take one of these pretty bright pink things. I'm going to put it on my little jar label. And then because this thread likes to unwind anyway, and that's kind of up to you what you do, but I am going to fray mine. Well, maybe. Yeah, I am. It's just going to take me a minute. up a little bit on it and there you go so I hope you enjoy that if you see him he's trying to steal my pipe cleaners anyway have fun crafting <laughs>